When I was diagnosed with TB, I was working as a medical officer in pediatrics. It is occupational disease in South Africa, as doctors have a three times increased risk of getting TB and up to six times increased risk of getting drug-resistant TB because we are exposed to it on a daily basis. I contracted what's called MDR-TB, which stands for multi-drug-resistant TB. I had gone on a standard four-drug TB regimen for about two months and it was only after two months that we had picked up that it was XDR-TB. I picked up complications uh, as allergies to the drugs available, which are very toxic to humans, uh, though it kills the bacillus of TB. I developed bleeding skin lesions as an allergy to the drug. My eyes and lips were bleeding all the time. I developed inflammation of my liver, uh, consequence to the drugs. We suspected that there was TB in the valves of my heart. They weren't also good enough screening tools for us to assess this adequately. And so I had a chemotherapy cath catheter inserted just above my heart to receive IV medication. And that subsequently became septic. So my treatment lasted three years, one week and a day. And before I concluded treatment, I began my interest with TB research and with the science behind TB. I realized what the clinicians were doing wasn't adequate. Uh, we needed to get down to a real cell molecular level to figure out what was going on. And that needed to be translated well to the stethoscope and the drugs that we give the patient. You, you would look at any other disease, uh, whether it's cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and say, gee, if, if we were working with the same things that we had available 50 years ago or 100 years ago, would that be acceptable to, to anybody? But that's the situation in tuberculosis in terms of the diagnostics and the drugs that we're actually using. This is a large global public-private partnership that's led by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the TB Alliance, and the Critical Path Institute. Our mission is to accelerate the development of an entirely novel three or four drug regimen for tuberculosis. We understand that if we're successful in doing that, we also need the appropriate diagnostic to go along with it. The idea being that if we have that new drug regimen, we want it to deploy it to patients who need it most on the very first dose. And so this public-private partnership is really focused on driving the collaboration that's needed to make that happen as quickly as possible. Our first very large data platform data sharing effort, which is a partnership between the Critical Path Institute and the World Health Organization, we're bringing together through the first phase three clinical trial data sets. There were essentially three big clinical trials that tried to shorten the treatment of tuberculosis without succeeding. But once you put all this data together, you get a much higher statistical power that would allow us to understand how much we can shorten the drug regimens and in what way we can measure the way this process is in the clinical trials themselves. So thanks to the aggregation of all of this information and the analysis of the information together. Our partnership with the World Health Organization is intended to bring together those three major phase three data sets in an aggregated and standardized way and to then make those data publicly available to qualified researchers so that we can improve the way that we, we design these trials going forward. We basically contribute anything that we have in terms of our armamentarium that could be useful to the fight against TB. So clearly this first of all includes the use of any drugs that we're developing to be used together with the drugs of any other sponsor, be they pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, even other not-for-profits. So we contribute not only the willingness but the leadership in terms of providing a common platform to put these drugs together, to test them together preclinically before they even are ready to be put into patients. The second large data sharing initiative is this relational sequencing TB data sharing platform where we are partnering whole genome sequence information from global surveillance isolates along with phenotypic information and patient outcome data where possible. This data platform will first be made available to members within the CPTR consortium to really help us validate this platform and also to enable early assay development that we hope will become diagnostics for TB in the future. Over time, we will make this more and more accessible 
to the TB research community and ultimately to clinicians who need to make good therapy decisions for patients they're treating. We have a RSEC TB database that allows us to compare different strains around the world, understanding their genetic mutations, right? If we have a situation like this, then uh, we will be able to have drug susceptibility testing much more efficient than what it is today. As a result, we will have then the possibility of detecting immediately that presence of resistance to one or two or three drugs and redesign the regimens, not only using the old drugs, but perhaps redesigning regimens using new drugs and knowing exactly the type of bacillus we are dealing with. In order to really make an impact in the field, we do need to understand how to treat an individual. What Resect TB is just at the forefront of the genomic revolution, where we're starting to have personalized medicine being available to a group of disenfranchised individuals who are infected with tuberculosis, the opportunity to have a personalized medical treatment available to them rather than going through a, a, a regimen that is pre-described. The emergence and the growth in the trend of TB drug resistance is a problem that we need to be very conscious of. So we're very focused on bringing forward that new drug regimen that's going to be the best therapy for patients in the future. We also want to make sure that we can diagnose the patients that need that new regimen very early in their, in their treatment course, sharing our learnings from the data that we've already generated to date so that we know where to put those resources, where the best research is going to be to help us solve those problems. In the CPTR initiative, because the progress is made on the back of all of the participants who contribute their own pieces, everyone, in a sense, takes credit and benefits at the end of the day when progress is made. And whether that's in defining a new marker, whether that's in advancing the regulatory science, whether that's in even achieving better funding for the field, uh, whether that's in putting clinical trials together that otherwise would not have happened, what everybody feels the strongest about is the ultimate parties who have to gain from this are the patients who both are part of the clinical trials, but the patients who are afflicted with TB. TB can really affect anybody. I was a young, healthy person. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't have any comorbid diseases. I was just exposed to it. And you get TB from breathing, and everyone has to breathe, right? TB doesn't respect borders. And if we don't share this data in order to save people's lives, in the end we will all suffer. We need to work together to end TB.